It's time! <laughs> Episode 14, the ATM, the Apologise to Me podcast. My name is Martin Devlin. With me, the one, the only, the true, honest voice of the sports fan is Mark Watson. We're talking Netball Australia and the Hancock sponsorship row. Pat Cummins. Rich old Pat decided to be a Chardonnay socialist. The All Blacks and the Black Ferns clashed this weekend in terms of scheduling. How, how on earth did that cock up come about? Do you believe in the Black Caps? NPC final, if we care, if we can. And I want to talk about the FIFA World Cup draw as well. Apologise to me! But what? let's kick it with Netball Australia. And I've kind of flipped and flopped on this issue somewhat. Okay, the background, people, just really quickly, is Hancock Prospecting was the naming rights sponsor for the Diamonds. Uh, a player called Danell Wellam, the first Aboriginal player to be about to play for the Diamonds in two decades, and only the third in the 80-year history of Australian women's netball, raised concerns about that company because the owner, the founder, a guy called Lang Hancock, made some absolutely disgusting, just appalling comments about Aboriginal people Four decades ago, he's been dead for 30 years now. His daughter, Gina Reinhardt, is the richest woman in Australia, and she controls that company. Uh, no compromise at all. The Diamonds players decided uh, to support uh, Donnell, and so they wouldn't wear those dresses in the Constellation Cup. It's now an absolute impasse. Reinhardt has withdrawn her $15 million sponsorship offer. Netball Australia is $11 million in the hole. Surely there was a better way to try and figure this out and resolve it. See, the things that I've got here, Water, before before you start, is that... You know, you are adults here. I, I can't put myself in the headspace or the position of this Aboriginal woman, and none of us can, and they have been treated just despicably over the years in Australia. However, you know, you still got to look at the whole picture, and the whole picture is the future of the sport and every young kid that wants to play netball and everything else. And I just would have thought that if these players have done that and made that decision without consulting with their bosses, well, then mm. those Diamonds women deserve their contracts ripped up as far as I'm concerned. Did those say Diamond players go to the Commonwealth Games? Let's talk about the Commonwealth. Let's talk about the monarchy. Let's talk about oppression. Let's talk about colonisation. Let's talk about the absolute appalling history that has come through the monarchy. Um, I would have thought that if you're true to Danelle Wellam, you would have protested and not gone to the Commonwealth Games as well. Now, for Danelle Wellam, again, I I'm with you, but this was a comic made 40 years ago. Uh -huh. 40 years ago, yeah, I think was. times have moved on. You know, if you want to make a protest, Danelle Wellam, don't play. Just don't play. That is the best way of doing it. Just stand down. But you cannot have one player telling the marketing department what to do. You cannot have one player putting into disrepute the entire financial organisation that is netball. The players will still continue to get paid, but it's those clubs, it's those smaller provincial areas that ultimately end up suffering because of this. Equally too, you know, now you look at, the oppression of indigenous people and minorities around the world, and it's appalling. But you know, we all agree on that. History hasn't been kind to anybody, really. If you go back, it hasn't really been kind to anybody. But you, you know, I wonder whether these players too are still wearing Chinese products. After all, China. You know, we've got the um, Uyghur minority over there, the Muslims. Um, that's basically racial cleansing that is going on from the Chinese government. Oh, yeah, but. My white wear's made in China, all my clothes are made in China, everything's made in China. I don't really want to go down that path. We see it with the Labour government, don't we? We no, see it with the governments. No, we see it with know, the climate more than change protests. We see the people up, that glue themselves happy to, to the road, but they won't do it to the Chinese yeah, embassy. More than happy to stand up against Fiji, more than happy to take a stance on the Russia and the Ukraine when they've got everyone else backing them. But, oh, you won't, won't upset China because of the trade agreements and the financial side of it. I mean, to me, there is just so much hypocrisy in this, and these players need to be really, really careful that if they're going to live by the sword, be prepared to die by the sword, okay? Just... Just stop getting paid. Just don't play. Yeah, you know, I want to go into Pat Cummins too. Because yeah, I want to get into that as well. But, you know, on this, you've also got to realise, people, that these days um, ticket sales are absolutely irrelevant. Sports survive on two things. They, they survive on sponsorships from corporates and television rights. Yeah. That's the only thing that brings the money in. So, you know, these players can sit there and they can say, and they can protest about whatever political cause is very important to them. And we're going to get on to Pat Cummins because but, if you want hypocrisy, that's, that's yeah, the worst yeah, one yeah, of all. But, but here, what I... It, it, I just feel, and, and I was talking to Jamie Wall about this yesterday, I just, and he came up with a great word. He just said, it's sad is what it is. And, you know, my initial reaction was kind of like, rah, 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 and then the more I think about it, the more I just think, 
surely, as I go back to the first point, there was a better way of doing this. Rather than turning into a media circus, if those women were serious about this, surely they would have gone to their bosses, they would have raised these concerns, they would have sat down. And there is a resolution here. But But the moment you stand up and be confrontational and you start accusing Gina Reinhardt, she's a woman who's a corporate raider. She got big nutters, man. I mean, she deals with this kind of crap every single day of people yelling at her and telling her this and telling her off and all of these things. And her reaction is just to turn around and go... Whatever, I'm moving on. But, this but way. as I say, these players should all become members of the Australian Republican Party, and hey, and break away from the Commonwealth. That is, I mean, that is the greatest thing, isn't it? The Commonwealth. You know, let's look at it. Colonisation has done more damage to the Aboriginals than a comment from some former mining billionaire. But oh, they want to pick and choose their arguments, yeah, which is what I really choose, struggle yeah. with. Um, but look, the reality is these days, have a look at it. The only sponsors that you're really going to get thing from are probably going to be alcohol companies, yes. gambling yes. organisations, energy companies, and the odd bank. Yep. Outside of that, very hard to find major sponsorship. Now, you go behind the scenes on any of them, you'll find a level of moral corruption and possibly in the past of yeah. evil le- legal um, corruption. But... How far do you dig? How far do you want to go here? I mean, you've only got to have a look at the current All Black sponsors and the previous sponsor. AIA were responsible for the global meltdown in 2008. Convenient you have, a look, at, you have Convenient a look at Ineos forgotten. at the moment. And then go and do a little quick search on Altrad. Yeah, well, the it's guys funny. up on floor chart. Yeah, so, so what New Zealand rugby are very good, aren't they? They love to... They love to do this whole virtue signalling, get behind women's sport, give Sarah Coxedge the you know rugby player of the year because it was just the right thing to do at a time when we'd had scandals with the Chiefs and cheerleaders and off-field scandals with Hurricanes players and it was just a box-ticking exercise. Absolute roll of rubbish. Hey, well, virtual signal. Hey, but when it comes to sponsorship, we'll... we'll, we'll yeah, we'll, we'll take we, whoever's we, offering the money, We'll just mate. take that's whoever's they, on they the money. So, so we're not genuine and we're not legitimate. No, of course we're not. We're, we're just simply doing this for media reasons. And we're trying, I, mean, I, I, heard, I heard your little rant the other day, and I thought it was brilliant, on ASB Bank just trying to virtual signal around, we'll pull our sponsorship from oh, the ASB I Tennis believe, Classic I if know. we've got any players in there from Belarus or from Russia. Oh, just, really? Well, get I mean, your hand yeah, off it, absolutely. please. I mean, just we all knew utter, what it was, was Apologise to me! Can we get on to Pat Cummins? Let's get on to Pat Cummins. Okay, this is a story with him, people. He's the Australian cricket captain. Alinta Energy sponsored Australian cricket for years. Pat Cummins has made himself a multiple, multiple, multiple millionaire from Australian cricket, from playing in the IPL. Now he has rejected Alinta, says he won't do any more commercials for them, having done them in the past. Yet he will still play the IPL in India, earn $1.5 million in a country that pollutes as much yep. as China, one of the worst in the world. He's he, he played a match last night in Perth, and I'm damn sure he didn't ride his bike across the Nullarbor to get there. Oh. He drives a Range Rover, he flies first class. This guy is the biggest hypocrite that walks yep. the planet and, and, right now in world sport. And they play under the floodlights, which has got a huge carbon footprint. I mean, Australia, 58% of the global coal trade comes out of Australia. It all goes to China, the largest polluters in the world. Now, this is Australia. Hey, if you really believe in yourself, Pat Cummins, you stand down and go, I will not play for Australia. I will not represent my country until the government has a fundamental shift in its thinking and its policy and we stop never exporting that, China it? overseas. Never you talk about India, 7% of global emissions come out of India, but more than happy to go over. We know it's corrupt. We know at the end of the day, the IPL is just one giant money laundering exercise for a whole lot of very, very wealthy billionaires. You've got a class structure over there, it's which is abhorrent. absolutely yeah, appalling, dreadful, which yeah. is basically apartheid. Is it the Dalek right at the very bottom? Yeah. Dalek, I think, which is the lowest class lowest in caste, India. They call it, caste, yeah. Yeah, the lowest caste in India. India, which is basically just, call them. Which Untouchables. Is just absolute nothing short of apartheid. Oh, but I'm happy to move past. I'll go back to the whole uh, Uyghur minority Muslim thing in China again. Where are you taking your stance on this? You're a complete and utter okay, so what moron. You're, what, you're saying, what you're saying is that this is grandstanding, and we now live in a world where the generation... And uh, the media jump all oh, over the course, it. When, are we, having, when are we having the true story? When's the true story going to come out about Glenn Moore and the women's black It's never going to come out. And, and what actually happened in come one out. player who brought his entire career down was nothing short, in my opinion, and from what I've heard, a nasty piece of work who's gone through her entire career, gone through her entire career, basically destroying the culture within clubs and anything that she's been involved in. Oh, but we won't have that no, conversation have that. No, no, because that. he's been accused. No, the and how dare we out. challenge the her? The came out. She's a woman and also she's Māori and therefore you're racist and sexist if you dare. Look, I know a hell of a lot more about this. So okay, do so I, what mate. we're seeing though with Pat Cummins, mate, is, is we're just, we are seeing, I believe, grandstanding. And look, and I believe everyone's got the right to stand up and say what their society or, or and or political views are. But the reality of it is, is as you say, as soon as you start digging down 
that rabbit hole. Hang on a second. There is hypocrisy and contradiction yeah. at every single turn. And you know, you can't you can't be one and not the other. This is why I reject this stuff out of sight. I just think it's laughable is what it is. But it makes for easy media headlines and, and it makes for clickbait mm. headlines, and that is why the mass media will pick it up and they'll run with it. No one wants to do any investigating. Poor old Glenn Moore, not only is his career wrecked. The guy is a shell. I saw him about three weeks ago. He's lost a whole lot of weight. He's suffering in his personal life because of this. He'll never coach rugby again. And what did he actually do, Mark? Nothing. What did he, he actually do? He, we he, don't even know whether he, he said the things he was no. accused of saying because that, oh. that investigation refused to well, investigate. Yeah. And do you know why they refused to investigate? Because they knew that they would find on his side. That's why and they the did. the political environment doesn't allow for that. And the no, box ticking exercise and those particular journalists who, let's be honest, push the whole feminist card and politicise everything, and I genuinely believe a man haters just want to keep the narrative going, mate. Hey, forget in-depth journalism, forget getting both sides of it. This is just, hey, this is the way we're going to go. I mean, look, look at some of the accusations that were made around Gordon Walker and the kayaking. You know, never actually bothered at any point going to Lisa Carrington. You know, I know Gordy well. Pretty tough time in his life. Now you get on Google now. Gordon Walker, four-time Halberg coach of the year. Gordon Walker, coach of Olympic champion. Bully. This, no, bully the first says. thing that comes up, Gordon Walker accused of being bullied. Yeah. Now. Fortunately, he's managed to get through that. And the trauma you're going to have, and I know we're going off on a tangent here, some point men are just not going to want to coach women's sport, just like men don't want to teach little kids how to no, swim. No, you can't. You can't, just can't. No. Or be primary school no, teachers no, because no. Yeah. if you accidentally put a foot out or someone wants to misinterpret it or somebody's got an agenda, you have a Go life on. sentence. That's you have a life sentence. That's but exactly no, it. No, look, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I've got to say, and we, I think we, we should we, laugh we, at it. I think, I think guys like Cummins, rather than get all high horse about it, we should laugh. We should take him to task and laugh at him because well, of this. Because you are a fool and you're making yourself look foolish, well, I'll mate. I'll keep saying it, mate. Cummins, listen to me, mate. If you're true about it, stop taking the payment, okay? Stop taking the money because you are actually putting in danger the commercial revenue for cricket in Australia, it doesn't affect you. You'll still that's live right, you in still your big house exactly. with your big carbon with the big footprint, view, that's exactly but it's it. the smaller organisations, you know, the Selfish mums and dads is is, doing mate. sausage sizzles to raise enough money to get their kids to be able to go to a cricket tournament. But hey, let's compromise all of that. Let's yeah, compromise let's about, all of I that. I just make mention of that as well? Every time I, I flick onto the News Hub website, I'm sick and tired of these paid-for ASB or ANZ ads where, oh, the ANZ Bank has given $200 to a kid in the Hawks' for base. For a billion dollar profit. Cricket. Two billion I'm dollar sorry, profit. Exactly. You aren't the good guys. No. You're trying to wash yourselves by getting involved with sport. And you, you actually think that we're so stupid we're going to believe this. You suck a billion dollars out of the country. You extort interest rates. You extort fees. And you hand over $200 and pretend that we're actually me what that you're somehow meant to be some community-minded organization if you are slash your profit in half and reinvest 500 million back into this country how about that yeah. and, and when your interest rates hit eight percent and every family that is having to you know sit back down and renegotiate their interest rates suddenly says i can't afford that but you're the community bank yet, yeah, but we're going to take your house tomorrow. We're going to take your house tomorrow. And by the where are all our profits hey, going? Where are all our profits those, going? If the Russians or the Russians come here, though, we're going to withdraw our sponsorship. Oh, no, we're not. Because if we withdraw our sponsorship, the other bank will come in and take it. Apologise to me! All right, let's move on then. All Blacks versus Black Ferns this weekend. You've got two test matches on. The Black Ferns locked into a quarterfinal in the Women's World Cup. The All Blacks are playing Japan. One kicks off 40 minutes before the other one. Look, I know that some some of these things get scheduled months, if not a year in advance and so forth. But if you're New Zealand rugby, they employ hundreds of people at huge salaries to figure this kind of stuff out. How did this get cocked up? And could you not go back to Japan and say, oh, look, bit of a bit of a miscommunication here. We'd like our game to dovetail into theirs or the other way around so that people could actually watch them both. We don't want to have two great um, uh, rugby occasions, test rugby occasions overlapping. How did this cock up happen? Well, this is New Zealand rugby for you. This is New Zealand rugby, one of the most resource organisations in the world. You try and go apply for jobs within it, or you don't have the experience or whatever it might be, and yet it is just some of the most basic, fundamental marketing... Um, Botch-ups botch is what it is, isn't it? You could come up with, but I mean, who are you going to be watching? I'm watching the All Blacks yeah, Japan. We're all, we're all no one's going to watch the Black Ferns Wales when we beat them up a couple of weeks ago. How does that even work too within the Women's Rugby World Cup? You meet them in a pool game and then suddenly you're meeting them in a quarter final? Oh, it happens in the, it happens in the, it happens well, in the men's game. No, it, it happens, doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it does. You have to go across the other side of the door. You can only meet them back in a semi-final or final. Well, that's because right, they're 12 teams and they think, oh, okay, yeah, I get what you mean. I mean, you can actually meet a team again. I mean, it happens in football World Cups. It happens but, in you rugby. Know, I, I see guys, journalists saying. 
Five reasons not to watch the All Blacks this week in a game a pushing the political angle of it, women's mate. rugby. Stop Don't tell me what, what we can do. What do. We'll watch what Crikey. we want to watch. I just want to go on a damn sabbatical sometimes, Martin. Do you believe... What are you watching this weekend? I'm watching the All Blacks, mate. Of course no you are. No question about it. And after that, depends on where I am. I was thinking I'll go to the pub and watch it, but then I was thinking the, 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 the pub won't have Spark. It won't have the Women's World Cup on. So I, I, yeah, I actually... why do... are you going to watch something? That's... I mean, we know what the Japan drilling is going to be, but I guess there's a level of curiosity. Japan off the last well, World Cup. Well, also, who they Getting up over beating Ireland. I and think they beat South Jamie Africa Joseph, as well. you got John Mitchell, you got Tony Brown all there. I'm really... And also, after speaking with Justin Marshall yesterday, who is absolutely unequivocal in his argument, saying that it's up to Ian Foster now to pick the A-team for every one of these tests. Stop oh, chopping and changing. Stop fanning around. There's no RTS because New Zealand Rugby want their million dollar asset to play. Pick the team that's going to well, win the World Cup and play them test if they after don't test. Pick, if they don't pick their starting 15 this week, they will potentially come up very short the following week Against because Wales. they just simply that's haven't right, played. Haven't now, played. Wales haven't played either, but Wales are at home. Wales are desperate. We haven't shown enough this season to go in there confident no, that we can no. just come off the back of a six-week we, break we, we, and run we a were, group of players we were out. This close. We were this close. We were a brain fade from an Australian first five away from losing that Bledisloe Cup test and probably Ian Foster again under question about his job. Your drop. mate Fozzie, got your T-shirt on? Listen, you know... Apologise to me! One topic to finish with. Do you now believe in the Black Caps? Because we went to Australia, we weren't Frady Cats, we had a guy called Finn Allen who looked at their bowlers, Mark, and do you know what he did? He smacked the ball past them. <laughs> Kane, that's not the plan, is it? The plan is to go into your shell, isn't it? The plan is to defend and block and eke a single out. No, it's not. Some guy went out there with his Johnson in his hand and just smacked it over his head. And they didn't know who he was and they've given a blueprint. But I think we saw last week a fundamental shift in the way this Black Caps team is now going to play this T20 have Cricket to play World it Cup. Like that. They have to. They've, they've been to. too conservative. Look, I don't put a lot of kudos normally on T20 cricket. Like, I don't wake up and say, oh, that was a legacy game. Hey, we're going to be talking about this. This is like winning the America's Cup. But there is still nothing better than all of sport than beating Australia in cricket in at a marquee place. match yeah, at their place. when it's got the World Cup associated with it or, in fact, test match cricket because there is just such a level of arrogance. And they've earned that right to be arrogant against us, to be fair. Of course they have, mate. But we came out there and we just played with freedom, didn't we? Conway is just a quality cricketer. Finn Allen, I mean, you still question Kane Williamson in that batting lineup. I, I do. do. Yeah, I just I wonder do. whether mm. he still just gets out there. He's just not a natural stroke maker, is he? You can't manipulate his plumbing. He's a guy that's going to hold up an end. But if we get ourselves into trouble, he's not that guy that's going to get us out of trouble. Well, I think but I also can. think we need to congratulate again Bolton Southie. What a wonderful bowling combination he is. You know, Southie's just proof that you don't need to bowl 100 mile an hour. Well, it's Glenn still McGrath line and length. No, it's McGrath Glenn McGrath, McGrath it's Richard Hadley. Yeah. It's line and length, get the ball to move away. Um, but, you know, I see that Australia bounced back overnight against Sri Lanka. Finch scored a few runs. Mm-hmm. David Warner had That's another shot. They dangerous. are dangerous. But, look, it is a fickle game, do I believe? Look, I, I think if you go back, last T20, we made the final of the World Cup. We've made the two previous one-day World Cup finals. We won that Test Match World Championship. Why not? Why can't that run continue? And it's interesting, isn't it? Because we can be hard on the New Zealand cricket team and... I guess we don't have legacy, so we're always, we're still not convinced, are we? But I would have thought we've done enough now for the rest of the world to maybe start taking us seriously. But we still don't ever seem to be in the conversation, do we? We're still never really in the conversation. It's still Australia, it's still England, and it's still India. And then, well, hey, maybe South Africa. Awesome. Are we, are we gonna, Mate, but do. what about, but we didn't talk about the Barretts. They're not there this weekend. But they're playing rugby in their backyard, aren't they, Marty? What else are we talking about? Devlin. That is a disgusting act. The Platform.